Alright guys, this is USMA um, doing a fire cape tutorial. So first off, um, let's go over the stats you're going to want. So obviously, um, I'm doing this on my one defense pier, but you're going to want 99 range and over 43 prayer. Uh, you can do it with lower range, um, but you've already got the odds against you with one defense, and uh, you're really going to want that range level to be 99, so I'd recommend getting that up first. Uh, you can um, you can use like 70 or something like that, 75 for blowpipe, but um, yeah, I usually use a blowpipe and a crossbow, um, so that way you have something to do fast DPS, and then something to get some long range shots on for when you just need to safe spot something that's safe spotted behind another monster. Um, but yeah, so basically those those are the kind of stats you're gonna want. You're gonna want at least 43 prayer. I'm not doing any uh, anything under that because I don't want to do the tick eating or any of that. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Um, so let's get into the gear now. Alright guys, for the gear that you're going to want for Fire Cape, obviously I'm doing this on one defense, so I'm um, limited to that. Um, but you can obviously have separate things if you're higher defense. Um, so anyway, for one defense, this is basically what you're going to want. Um, if you don't have something, just substitute it for the next level down if you don't have the money for it or something like that. For example, a Robin Hood hat, you know, uh, not too important. Just put on a coif if you can't afford it. Um, for the cape, though, this is something you're you're going to want. You're going to want your ranging cape or you're going to want to have as accumulator. The ranging cape does the same thing. It just collects like 72% of your shot items, and you're going to want that so that way you're not running around trying to pick up stuff and not just wasting unnecessarily, wasting bolts and things like that. Uh, for your necklace, you know, Anguish, Fury, if you can't afford those, that would do a Glory. Um, obviously, in your ammo spot, go ahead and put your Bolt Racks if you're using the Carol's Crossbow. Or, you know, if you're using, like, a Rune Crossbow or something else, then just put whatever bolts you're going to use. Obviously, the higher, the better. It's going to make it easier for you. Um, if you're only doing it one time, then just buy the most expensive ones, because you're only doing it once. But if you're going for Jad Pet or something, then, uh, you know, plan accordingly. Uh, I use the Monk's Robe for the Prayer Bonus, um, Blowpipe for fast DPS to go ahead and kill monsters quickly, and Black Dehyde Chaps are fine. For these, you can use Holy Sandals um, for the Prayer Bonuses, or you can use Ranger Boots, it doesn't really matter. I use Region Bracelet to recharge hit points, that way I don't have to unnecessarily drink Brews. And then finally the Archer's Ring, I got it imbued in the Nightmare Zone for... Um, that's what we're looking at with the bonuses right here. 15 prayer is good. Um, 15 or more I would recommend, um, especially if you're a lower prayer. Uh, I usually have a couple of restores left over, but I've also done this a bunch of times. So just keep that in mind. So that's kind of what you want for your gear. Now let's go over the inventory. So for the inventory, um, it, it might be a little different for me for your first time. So what I would recommend for your very first time going in you should probably get rid of a couple restores and add on some brews, maybe half and half, just for your first time. Because what's going to happen is, uh, you know, none of us are perfect here. Uh, when you go in your first time and you're trying to do this, you're going to end up drinking more brews than you need to just because you're messing up, you're learning the safe spots and things like that. So for your first time, instead of 10, I would maybe bring, you know, 12 to 14, and then the rest restores. Um, that way you can get the feel of it. Go ahead and plan that you're not going to get the cape on your first try um, because you'd be a lot happier with the outcome, I think. Um, if you do get it your first try, you know, that's awesome, but the reality of it is you're probably going to need to practice a couple of times or watch a bunch of guides to get a good feel for it before you get it. It's all about learning, figuring out how you can save resources, and then learning from your mistakes. Um, so back to the inventory. Let's finish that up real quick. Uh, this is what I have, now that I've done this a couple of times, this is what I have every time, and, and it hasn't failed me yet. Uh, the first spot, I just do purple sweets. You obviously don't need 706 purple sweets because they're like 5k each, 6k exactly. You don't need this many. Um, I'm just farming for the Jad Pet right now, so that's why I have so many. I just bought a big stack so I can keep killing this thing because I'm going for the pet. Um, but if you're just doing one run for one fire cape, you shouldn't need more than 25 to 50. And that's on like the worst day ever. Like it's like the worst, the worst experience. You're really not using these for food. They're mostly for the run energy bonuses. Uh, every purple sweet gives you 10 run energy. And with the method that I'm going to be showing you guys, uh, you're going to need to be running a decent amount in some of the middle waves. 
and the in waves, so that's going to be really helpful. So that's why the first spot is purple sweets. I just bring one ranging potion, just because some waves I like to try to speed up and speed through, or maybe it's better to do fast DPS on some waves, and then I want to drink a ranging potion for Jad, so I can kill him as fast as possible, so that way the healers don't come back. So that's kind of why I bring one ranging potion. And um, also sometimes it's helpful if you if you drink a brew, and just maybe one sip of a brew, and you don't want to waste a restore because you're low. You can just take a sip of the ranging potion and not worry about your strength level or anything like that. Um, so after the ranging potion, uh, like I said, bring more Cerebrews your first time, but I usually bring 10, and that works out good for me. I usually have some left over. And then I just do my crossbow as one inventory spot, and then the rest restores. The more restores that you can you can manage to bring, I think, the better, because then you can afford to turn on your Eagle Eye Prayer or whatever to help boost uh, your stats and get you through the caves faster. Um, so that's pretty much it for the gear. Um, you know, you obviously don't have to use Blowpipe and Carol's Crossbow, but uh, this is what I use and it works really well. I would definitely recommend, um, especially if you can't do long range with um, because you're a 1 defense pure, then you're going to want a crossbow to get that distance on some of these monsters. And you'll see what I'm talking about a little bit more here once we get into the fight. All right, now that we are ready to go into the fight caves, we've got our gear, we're ready to go. We've got, you know, an hour to an hour and a half set aside of time. Um, let's get started. So a couple uh, things for quality of life I'm going to go over with you guys real quick. Go ahead and mark these tiles um, that, I, that I have marked. Go ahead and mark those on your screen. Uh, don't worry about the monsters. I mean, if you die or whatever, marking on your first time, it's better. It's better to get these things marked and out of the way so that way you know what you're doing. So go ahead, and uh, I'm just going to ignore this little bird here. But if you stand right here on uh, on this little lava thing, this little sulfur vent, if you stand one square to the north of it, just walk one, two, three, four, and then on that fifth tile, mark it. And then mark one, two, three, four, five to the side of it, going towards the west. And the reason this is so important will become apparent later. Just go ahead and mark them now, and I'll go over it later. Next, you're going to want to mark this tile right here, basically right where the lava ends on this north rock. And then you're going to want to walk. This is called Dragon Rock, by the way. Uh, so I'll be referencing this rock a lot because this is what I use. You hear people talk about Italy Rock, and that's way over here on, on the east side of the cave. But I don't really because it looks like Italy. It's like the shape of a boot. I don't really use Italy Rock, and uh, you'll see why. Um, go ahead, and once you've marked this tile, um, stand in front of the skeleton, walk one, two, three, four, five, and then step out to mark this one. And then once you've marked that, just click the wall and go ahead and mark this one right here too. Once you've done all that, those should be all the tiles you need marked. So go ahead and kill the bird and start wave two. And uh, now I'll just take you guys, um, this, first, this first clip will go over waves, mm, I'd say one through six real quickly, just get those out of the way. So basically it's just going to be a lot of these little birds, kill them as fast as possible because they drain your prayer. As you can see they already drained my prayer when I was showing you guys which tiles to mark. Um, so basically you want to kill the birds as fast as possible. Um, save your restores, all that good stuff. So... Um, Dragon Rock, right? Back to Dragon Rock. This is what I use for most of the fight caves, I would say. And it's so nice because um, it doesn't safe spot these, like the 22s and the birds. It doesn't safe spot those. But anything else, it will safe spot if you just stand right here where I'm standing. Um, there is one spawn right here in the northwest of the caves that monsters can come from. But all the rest of the spawns, everything will get caught and safe spotted. And you can just stand here. And so that's why I use these. But for these first waves, you know, you're not, it's nothing too crazy. You're just trying to minimize your prayer loss and killing the monsters. So yeah, like I said, this guy gets stuck on the rock right here. He gets stuck by this skeleton. And so use Dragon Rock. That's what this thing's called. Sometimes I think people call it Claw Rock. But yeah, whatever you want to call it, it saves spots pretty well. Always kill the birds first because they drain your prayer. And then always kill... Um, whatever is closest to you because the animation from the monster dying will actually delay the other monsters from attacking you. 
if that if that makes sense. So if you, if you've got two monsters right here, kill the one right in front of you, because when he dies, you're gonna have a second where you get a free hit on this one, and you might be able to kill him before he hits you. So those are just small things that aren't you know life or death, but they're just quality of life. They're gonna improve your experience, make you waste uh, less health and cerebrus and things like that. So that's always good. All right. So now that these first waves are coming to an end, um, you're going to see there's going to have two 45s on this next one. So I'm going to go ahead and kill them. Um, and then the next wave, this is why I did one through six, is because wave seven is when the ranger comes in. And this is when you're going to start needing to focus on using your prayer for the rest of the fight caves. Um, because it becomes pretty apparent that you need to always focus on your prayer. If this is your first time, that should be your number one priority when you're in the fight caves. Um, some of these waves, like the beginning ones, you don't have to worry about it. But as you'll see as we get later on into the fight caves, if you mess up prayer, then you could die and have wasted, you know, the past hour. So now that I see wave seven's about to start in the chat box, I'm putting on my range protect prayer because I know that the ranger's coming. And, uh, yep, so this will be for waves one through seven. I'll make a new clip for the rest of the waves. All right, guys, so we're here on wave seven. This next recording will go, uh, let's see, wave seven to 15, something like that. Yeah. So, yeah, just kill the ranger, pray range. He can do pretty good damage. If I take my prayer off, I'm sure he'll hit, he'll hit harder. But um, basically just, I basically just keep my range prayer on the whole time. You can turn it off really quickly in between um, waves if you want to. But I don't think that you save that much prayer by turning it off and stuff like it's not a big deal it's not gonna ruin your your experience if you keep it on i just keep it on because i don't like taking unnecessary damage so feel free to keep it on but yeah so wave 7 through 15 um or excuse me 7 through 14 you're basically just you know like i said earlier kill the birds as fast as possible so they don't drain your prayer and just keep pray range up and kill the rangers and that's about it you don't have to really save spot for these waves. You can kind of just run around and, you know, practice practice killing and moving. Because um, that's the skill you're going to want is to be able to attack and run away and not take damage. Um, but yeah, nothing too fancy for these uh, waves either. Just do what I'm telling you and you'll be good to go. I like to kill these guys um, before they melee me. I just walk away from them because the smaller versions don't do near as much damage when they melee you. Uh, like I said, you kill the first one, you get the animation delay, and you can kill the second one without taking any, any hits from them. Don't even give them the chance. Not much to say here. Um, you know, I told you guys to mark all these tiles. I'll be going over them really soon. I just wanted to get that out of the way in the beginning. So that way you guys are ready to go for the future waves. Yeah, as you'll notice, I always focus the bird first because you don't they drain your prayer pretty significantly. Like, um, obviously I'm praying range, so that's dra draining my prayer, but the birds can significantly drain it if they hit you a couple of times, you'll notice. And you don't want to get smited in here. That could be deadly. Um, pretty soon after a while... Oh, I got some lag here. That's another thing that can kill you is lagging in the fight caves. So I try to get a good stable world with good ping. This is the best for me right now, 75. Uh, so yeah, just the animation delay. As you can see, I'm just killing all these monsters before they even get the chance to hit me. Besides this one, of course, but yeah. So use use those little game mechanics to your advantage. It's going to make your experience a lot better. Uh, so wave 14 should be the two rangers. Um, you'll notice a pattern as you get in the caves. Once you see two 45s, then you know the ranger is going to be next. But since we already have the ranger out, then it's just going to be uh, two rangers. So it kind of starts off with one monster. You'll kill it, and then it'll spawn all the other monsters, and then you'll move up a tier. So right now we're on the ranger tier that we started on wave 7. And in a second, we're going to be on the melee tier. So you'll see that in a second. So this next wave, wave 14, is going to be two rangers. So I'm going to pray range and just kill them both really quickly. And then we're going to go into the next segment, which includes the melee spawning. And I'll show you guys what to do for those waves. Uh, that will be waves 15 through 30.
Alright guys, so waves 15 through 30. Let's go ahead and kill this last ranger on wave 14. Since there were two rangers. And now what we're going to do, you can take off this for a little bit. And, um, I'm sorry, 15 through 21. This will be waves 15 through 21, not 15 through 30. Um, so now on wave 15, it's going to be the 180 melee is going to start spawning. There's no rangers because we just killed them all. And so waves 15 through 21 is just you building back up this tier of the melee. -er. So you don't have to pray range at all, and you can actually save your prayer during these waves. Um, so yeah, just safe spot him right here on Dragon Rock, like I told you about. You'll spend most of your time over here, and he'll get stuck right here. The only thing you would have to worry about is if he spawned right here, because there is a monster spawn right here, like I told you guys about. And I'll show you what to do if that happens. Uh, hopefully I get a good example. Um of the melee spawning right here. But if he doesn't, I'll just go ahead and tell you now. All you're going to do is pray melee, let him walk over here. And then once he's about to hit you, you just walk where you mark this tile and he'll get stuck where you're at. So you'll basically trade spots with him. Um, I'll show you what I'm talking about on the next round here. So yeah, just keep safe spotting him. See, if the melee spawn right there, what you would do is you would run right over here and you would stand here and he would get stuck. I can actually show you. I can lure him real quickly. So I'm going to pray melee and lure him for you guys. Alright, so I'm going to let him follow me over here. So let's say the melee respawned right here. And you're safe spotting on Dragon Rock. And you obviously don't want him hitting you because he's going to do a lot of damage. He's got pretty strong hits. So he spawns here. You're standing here. What you're going to do is just let him come over a little bit and then just run. Don't let him hit you, but run. And once you're right here, look, he's going to get stuck. Too easy. And now you just safe spot him from here. And what I'll do is I'll safe spot him from here. And if there were other monsters, then I would just let them get close enough for me to shoot them with my blowpipe and then kill them while he's stuck here. Um, so yeah, these waves aren't too stressful. You know, just use the safe spot smartly and you'll be good to go. So look, he spawned here. I'm going to do the same thing that I just told you guys. Come right over here. And now he's stuck. And now what I'll do is I'll just fight him and watch for the other monsters. And when they get close, I'll kill them. You don't want to hit him too soon because then you'll get dragged out of the safe spot. Let him get a little close and now kill him so you don't move. And this guy is still stuck here. Kill the one closest to you, you get the death animation delay. And now you kill the other one. And then it's too easy. Just right back to the mail later. Finish him off and you're good to go. That's pretty much it. You're just doing this using Dragon Rock to safe spot. And if no one spawns right here, then it's too easy. I mean, you're just sitting right here, killing whatever gets trapped right here. And uh, that's really all there is to it. One thing I will show you guys that we'll use later on is why you brought the crossbow. Some of you might be wondering, why'd you bring two weapons? Well, you can't do long range if you're a one defense peer. So the crossbow has more distance than the blowpipe. So let's say I really wanted to kill this 180er first for whatever reason, and he's trapped behind this. If I use my blowpipe, it would drag me out here and I would start getting meleeed, right? So obviously I don't want that. I don't want to get hit at all. So I'll just use the crossbow and now I can hit him while standing here and take no damage from anyone. This isn't um, too important right now. It's going to be a lot important later on in the other waves once the ranger starts coming back in. And then it'll be important so that way you can safe spot something and only pray one thing or so that way you can um, just kill the ranger faster and then turn off your prayer. Um, so that's why it's important. But for these first few waves, you're just using the blowpipe, and it doesn't really matter because you don't have to pray range or mage or anything like that. So yeah, I'm um, just killing these guys and doing the same old, same old on Dragon Rock here, waiting for wave 21. And the reason wave 21 is important is because, um, or excuse me, 22. And the reason wave 22 is so important is because that's when the ranger will come back. And uh, the reason you know that is because we just had two birds and the 45. So that means next wave will be two 45s. And then after the two 45s, the 90 ranger will come back. So it's going to be this guy, the melee, and then the 90 ranger. And so all you have to do is pray range. But um, we'll get to that in the next clip here. Another reason having the blowpipe in the caves is so great is because you can use the special attack to heal. 
That way you don't have to waste purple sweets because they're expensive or waste stair brews when you don't need to. Like, let's say I'm 89 HP right now, right? And I just want to heal. You know, I'll just do that. And, and now I'm 92. You get the point. I can just heal up. Um, it's better to do it on the 90s, I think, just because they have more HP so you can hit higher and heal more. But you can do it on any monster, realistically. The 45s, the 90s, the 180s. I wouldn't recommend it on the 360s, just because you're not going to hit that often on them. Um, but that's why having the blowpipe is also really nice, because don't forget you can heal up with its special attack. Alright, so now we're about to have the 90s, and we'll get into our next segment, which is going to be waves 22 through 30. So I'll see you guys in that next clip. Alright, so I'm just killing this uh, melee on wave 21, and uh, we're about to start wave 22, which means the ranger is coming back. So basically what we're going to do is, to prepare for that, is just right at the start of the wave 22, we're going to turn on our prayer. Because we don't know if he's spawning here or what. So remember what I said earlier, if this guy spawns here, come safe spot him. Now, here's an interesting situation, right? You're getting ranged at, you want to go kill him, you want to turn off your prayer. Um, it's tempting, but you've got this guy right here, and you know he's going to whack you if you move. So what you're going to do, at least what I would do in this situation, is I'll just kill the 180 or while I'm praying range. Um, he's too far away for me to use my blowpipe, and I'm going to get dragged out and meleeed. So I'm just going to kill him first. I don't think I can make that with my crossbow either. Yeah, see, it would drag me. So just kill this guy first. Keep your prayer on for another you know, 5 to 10 seconds, whatever. It's really not a big deal. And this is basically what you're going to do for waves 22 to 30. You're just going to sit right here. Pray range and kill this guy when he gets safe spotted. Now the ranger's stuck right here and he's not going to be able to hit me. So I could turn this off if I wanted to for a couple seconds to save some prayer. Um, but if you're new, you might just want to keep it on to be safe until you figure out exactly where he can hit you. Because now he can hit me. The 180's dead, he's moved over. He can hit me. So praying range is going to be pretty important here. Otherwise, I'd be taking a lot of unnecessary damage. Like I said, you can flick it off, but really it's just probably safer to keep it on. Another trick I'll show you guys, um, we'll go ahead and go over it now because it's going to be really important later. Um, but see how I'm getting ranged right now from far away? Like, I can't even see this guy, and he's ranging me. He's, like, way over there. And uh, it's kind of annoying, right? Like, you want to take off your prayer. You want to kill him. You, you you don't want to move because you know this guy is going to hit you if you move. So you're like, well, what do I do? Um, so this is what you do in this situation. Let's say you really want to kill that ranger. You just lure him. So if you stand all the way back here against the this part of Dragon Rock and just stand against the wall, the ranger is going to pull towards you. And right now you can't see it, but he's walking and he's like right here. And right behind the 180. And he's walking over. And as soon as I step forward, he's going to hit me again, but he's going to be a lot closer. Check this out. Here he is. And now I can just switch to my crossbow and I can long range him. Not long range, but get further distance with rapid than I would be able to with the blowpipe. He'll die pretty soon. And what you can do is turn off your range prayer and finish the rest of the round. So that's something you can do if you're really looking to conserve prayer or you just like to be uh, conservative with using your restores and stuff like that. If you're uh, if you're nervous your first time, that can be a really helpful tip. I usually just kill whichever one's in front and let the next one move forward on these rounds because it's not too important. But in the later rounds, that learning trick I just showed you where you walk back here is going to be really important. When you have a major, a ranger, and a melee, you're really going to want to know that trick. So yeah, I'm praying range. I don't care if this guy is going to melee me. I'm going to take the damage because the range hits a lot harder. And you're probably going to kill him quick anyway. So it's not a big deal. So these waves are, you know, just like the other waves. Once you get the pattern for the first one, you just follow that pattern for the rest of the waves. Um, one thing that could change about this set of waves, waves 22 through 30, is that the ranger could spawn right here. And if the ranger spawns right here, uh, you might want to change up your game plan a little bit. I'm hoping I get a good example of the ranger spawning here so I can show you what I would do. Um, so here he is. He spawned right there. Perfect. Like I was just talking about. 
What I do normally is I'll go kill him instantly, right? It'll only take a couple hits, he'll die, and then I'll just come right back here. And now everything else is safe spotted. If you take too long to kill him though, and let's say the 180 is coming, then you're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna run away to a safe spot in prey range because you're gonna get hit. But I had some time there, I noticed it was just the 90, and then this guy who I'm not too worried about. So I went and killed the 90, got him out of the way, and now I can turn off my prayer for the rest of the round. I can safe spot these guys, and I'm chilling. It's too easy. So that's what I do if the ranger spawns here. Any other time, though, I just put up prey range and kill whatever comes here. And that's pretty much all there is to it for these waves. Um, so yeah, once you get in the pattern and the habit, it'll make a lot more sense. And it'll be too easy. So this guy's here, right? Just walk over here so you don't get meleeed. He's too far to crossbow, so I just kill him. Right? Just follow that pattern and you'll be good. Kill the bird whenever he comes to you. Don't let him drag you anywhere. Just kill him when he comes to you. And finish off this guy so you can kill the ranger. It's too easy. Um, another thing I didn't tell you guys is for my uh, blowpipe I use rune darts. You can use whatever you want, but obviously the, the better quality of the dart, the higher you're going to hit and the faster it's going to go for you. So I'm, I'm doing these fight cave runs a lot, probably a couple every day I would say. So just use whatever, whatever darts you want based on what your goal is. If you're going for the fire cave once, then I'll throw rune in or dragon and you'll be fine. Probably don't need dragon, it's probably a little too expensive, but... Yeah, feel free to use rune. If you're just um, trying to save money, you could probably do fine with Addy, but I wouldn't go below Addy darts. So no ranger here. Just safe spot everything. Rangers are ranging me from far away. I don't like it. Let's say I want to lure him over and kill him so I can take off my prayer. I'll walk over here for a couple seconds, let him walk up, and then we'll go crossbow him out. From far away and now I'm a safe distance to where I'm not getting hit and I can hit him if there was another monster right here then we wouldn't be able to do this so it's important to be aware of your surroundings and to know how far you can safe spot from before you get pulled out because you don't want to get dragged out and get meleeed for a 24 from this guy or whatever the hell he hits One thing you could do right here if you really wanted is you could kill the one in the back with your crossbow. But it's not really important because he's going to get stuck on this skeleton anyway. So I just kill him and let him run towards me. You could kill him back here so that way you could kill the smaller versions that could spawn after. But it's, it's not too important. You're probably going to kill them before they damage you anyway. Alright, so we just had two 45s. So wave 29 should be... Two rangers and the meleeer is what I'm expecting for wave 29. Yep, so we got two rangers and the meleeer. So just let them come over and kill them. Great range, and you're chilling. If one spawned over here, then I would kill him first and then try to run over here. Um, but they didn't, so I don't have to worry about that. Another thing to keep in mind about this safe spot is if shit hits the fan, and you start getting attacked from over here and you've got another guy right here ranging you or whatever and it's just not going good and you need a way out quickly what you can do is you can take off sprinting and you can just run south and then come over here to the west and this big rock over here if you just sprint around it everything will follow you and it'll get trapped and then you only have to worry about praying one thing so let's say there was a melee and a major and all that they would all be trapped over here or maybe even back here and you could just chill here and be fine. So that's kind of what you're looking at. Um, for if stuff hits the fan over on Dragon Rock and you just need to escape because you're taking too much damage, then that's what you'll do. So now that we're on wave 30, it's going to be two 180 meleeers. Um, so yeah, just stay over here if you can. This is the safe. This is a good safe rock. Get consistent and figure out everything with this rock so that way you're not running around the fight caves because you don't want to run around if you don't have to. Uh, it can create a lot of problems sometimes. So now that we're getting ready to finish wave 30, wave 31 is very important to start praying mage and keep that on for the rest of the fight caves because the 360 major spawns at wave 31 
and he is going to hit very hard and very fast and you do not want to be caught not praying mage when he comes so after I kill this guy I'm gonna keep my mage prey up for the rest of the fight caves alright guys so we're about to kill the last melee 180 on wave 30 I'm gonna put up mage prey before I even kill him because this guy can hit you from across the fight cave basically you don't want to be caught without your mage prey up or you're gonna take a lot of damage so I'm just gonna stand here and wait till I hear that sound and see the flames. That means he's hitting me. So then what you're going to do for waves 31 through 40, um, what is it? No, sorry, 31 through 37 is you're going to stand over here and pray mage. Now once he's hitting you against that wall, you know he's lured. You can come over here and kill him. And then you can just start every round right here and, and repeat this process. And you'll do this waves 31 to 37. I'll just go ahead and show you guys what happens if you take off your mage prayer and let this guy hit you. Okay, well, I was hoping he would kind of hit me for more so you could see. But usually it's like a 40 or something crazy like that. But yeah, basically just keep your mage prayer up or you're going to get screwed. Later on when the ranger comes in, it's going to be very tempting to get, when you're getting hit by the major and the ranger at the same time, it might be tempting to switch to protect from range, but never do that because this guy will hit you for a lot harder. So you kind of just have to deal with the damage you're taking from the ranger and kill him as fast as possible because it's a, it's a lot more important to put on protect from magic. So these waves are very similar to the other ones. You're basically just, you know, sitting over here on the left side of western side of Dragon Rock and just safe spotting everything you can. Uh, the only difference is now you have your magic prayer up the whole time. Um, so as we work through this new tier with the 360, um, you don't have to worry about the rangers just yet because um, they don't come in until I think wave 37 or 38. So until then, just pray mage and go through the routine. Um, one thing I will show you guys, so this is going to be more important in the later waves, but if the major spawns right here, and let's say there's some rangers and meleeers and other stuff over here, they can't hit you if you're back here. Um, so you can just safe spot him with your crossbow from here. And um, usually they'll be trapped over here. Sometimes the ranger can hit you if he's the first one. And then what you would do is you would just go kill him right here while praying mage. And you'll just tank the ranger hits while praying mage. And then come back here and you can just safe spot the major. And you don't have to move. So that's why I had you highlight this tile. Um, you can also do it from here. But if you do it from here, if a ranger was right here, he could hit you. So that's why I had you mark these tiles. is because there are safe spots for whatever monster is here. Whether it's a ranger or a major, you can safe spot them from right here with your crossbow. Watch your prayer. Uh, I just got to four prayer and didn't even realize it. So you always want to be watching that because if that thing goes down, you're going to take a lot of damage. Um, definitely more important the farther you get in the caves, but always important. And you want to build these habits early so that way you don't get screwed for them later on. Um, so since it's just the major, I'm just going to pull out my blowpipe and go kill him. Uh, I was just wanted to show you guys that safe spot. But if you know it's just him and you just want to kill him fast, then... Use whatever is the fastest DPS weapon you have and get it over with. So yeah, even though the round's over, keep that mage prayer up. Because these monsters spawn quick. And you do not want to get hit by them. Because if they spawn in the center, he can hit you right away. And if he doesn't spawn in the center, he can still hit you pretty soon right after that. So what I'm going to do is just keep showing you guys this lure so you get it ingrained in your head. Just stand back here, and then when he hits you, you know he's close, and you can go kill him. Uh, so I stepped out from the wall, so this guy can hit me now. So I'm just going to kill him and get him off of my back. And uh, yeah, that's why it's always important to, to kill whatever's hitting you first. Because even if they're these little small things, they can do a lot of damage and kind of annoy you. So... Just get those guys out of the way. 
Another thing I'll show you guys now you can do is you can prayer flick. So obviously you could keep eagle eye on to increase your ranging by 15% or whatever it is. But you can do the flicking to save your prayer. So basically what you do is you just double click it. Um, once you get an EXP drop, you just keep double clicking it. So I got an EXP drop. I'm just going to double click. And now you see the XP drops. Some of the, Well, the first two were um, were blue showing that I had the prayer on. So that'll actually save your prayer from dropping. And you'll still get the benefits of having the prayer on. So that's a neat little trick. Uh, that was kind of a crappy example because it only worked on like half of the ones I did. Um, but you get the point. You kind of get the rhythm for it after you've practiced it a couple of times. Um, but it's not too important to know. It's just a neat little quality of life trick to save resource. As you can see, I'm doing it now. Well, I just messed up as soon as I said I was doing it. But yeah, if you get the the darker blue EXP drop, then you know it, it worked. Um, I don't really care about it too much. It's not that important. It's just a neat little trick. It's not something you need to know how to do for the fight caves. So, um, yeah, on these waves, basically, once you kill the major, feel free to take off your prayer, but put it back up right away because you do not want to forget about it. It's very easy to forget about it. Every set of waves just has a routine. Um, so once you learn the routine for that set of waves, then you're good for the rest of them. The only thing you have to worry about is when certain monsters spawn over here. And that could change the way you operate. But basically it's the same routine for each set of waves. Um, and most of the sets of waves, you're just standing right here and doing something over here. So fight caves can seem intimidating, but they're actually not that bad. Alrighty. So we just had the birds and the 45. So we know that after we kill this major, it's going to be another major and two 45s. So just go ahead and prepare for that next round. Which is going to be 37. So it should be two 45s and the major. So here he comes, right? I don't want him to hit me while I'm killing the major. So I'm going to walk over here and um, try to get rid of him fast. So that way I'm not taking unnecessary damage while I'm fighting the major. Because these guys will just keep mailing you and taking your health away and being a nuisance. So here's what I was talking about with the blowpipe. I'm going to put on my eagle eye just to hit harder. And now I'll heal my HP for free. With the spec. I think sometimes it doesn't work. I don't know if it's only a chance of healing your health or how, how exactly it works, but yeah, it can be helpful if you don't want to waste cerebrus and things like that. All right, so we just killed um, the 245s. All we have left is this major, and then wave 38 is going to start, and the ranger is going to come back out. So this is going to change the way we do things. So now I'm going to show you guys why I had you mark all these tiles. And we'll be using this strategy for waves 38 through 45. So I'll show you guys that in the next clip. Alright, so here we are at the end of wave 37. We've just got the major left. He's really low. Um, the ranger is going to spawn to the next wave with the major. So we're going to move to save spots for this portion of the caves. So basically we're going to be using these tiles that I had you mark in the beginning. So what you're going to do is if you have someone over here, you're going to lure them. So you just run over here and lure them over. Because you really need to be set up in this safe spot over here for this next portion of the waves to work well for you. Otherwise, you're going to take unnecessary damage. So now that we're getting ready to start wave 38, we're going to bring this major over here. So to lure anything over here to this safe spot, all you're going to do is come walk back here in the back corner next to the skeleton. And you're just going to stand here. And in a second, he's going to mage me. And once he mages you and you hear it and you see it, then you know he's lured over. And now you can kill him. All right, so a very important wave 38. Keep your mage prayer up, but know... See, he's hitting me. But just know that you could be getting ranged at the same time. 
Um, so if that happens, let's say you're getting maged and ranged at the same time, you're going to run back here. You're going to run back here no matter what, right? Even if you're only getting ranged, you're still going to run back here. But it's very important that you keep your protect from magic up at this point because they can both spawn on top of each other and hit you at the same time. And the mage will hit you a lot harder than the range will. So even if you're tanking range hits and you're like half health, keep your protect from magic up. And then once they're hitting you right here, run over. Keep your protect from magic up and make sure when you stand here, make sure you're only getting hit by one of them. If you stand here and you're only getting hit by one of them, then you can keep that prayer up. If it was the ranger right here and he was hitting me and it was just the ranger, nothing else, and I stood here for like three seconds, then I could turn on protect from range. So you kind of have to tank some hits, but it's important to do that because you don't want to you don't want to think, oh, it's just the ranger and then the major hits you from over here and you can't see him and you die because that could be really annoying, especially after you've been in the fight caves for over 30 minutes. So keep that mage prayer up and uh, then you know you're safe. So now that you've killed whatever monsters here, you're actually safe. I could actually take off all my prayers and just stand here and I wouldn't take any damage because of the way this safe spot works, which I'm going to explain to you guys right now. So the way this safe spot works is, as you'll notice, we're in line with this rock right here, Italy rock. We're in line with it. So any monsters that spawn behind it are actually stuck behind it. And then we're also in line with this rock, dragon rock. So any monsters that spawned over there are trapped. And then anything that spawns in the center or the back, you're effectively funneling to you right here. So that's how the safe spot works. And then I'll go ahead and show you guys why we mark these other tiles. Um, so this, this square right here is safe, right? Nothing can hit you. Here's why we mark the other tiles. If you move one square over, any level 22s that were here trapped behind Italy Rock would come straight down. Because they can now see you and they can move to attack you. So right here, nothing's attacking you. Unless it's the beginning of the round and you're getting maged and ranged. But once you're safe... And you move here, any level 22s would come down right here, right? One more square, any level 45s would come down right here. So we don't have any 22s or 45s or anything like that because this is wave 38. So it's just the Major and the Ranger. So we know that we just killed the Major. There's a Ranger somewhere in the fight caves, safe spotted right now. He's either back here or back here. If he's back here and I move one square over he'll be able to attack me. So let's go Let's go over all these real quick just so you guys are aware. Any 22s could hit you here. 45s could hit you here. 90s could hit you here. The 180 melee could hit you here. And then the 360 could hit you here. So that's how these squares work. So we know there's another ranger. So if he's trapped back here, in theory, if he's trapped back here, he should be able to hit me if I move right there. So what you're going to do is, once you're safe here and you know there's no other monsters, and you know the layout of your wave, then you're going to prepare accordingly. So, we killed the major, there's just a ranger. I'll put on my protect from range and step on that square. As soon as I step here, I see the range bullets come. And now we just lure him, like we did earlier. And then once he hits you, you know he's safe spotted. And now you can move back and kill him. I'm going to do the blowpipe just for a little bit of health. But after every round, immediately back to Mage Prey. Immediately. Very important. Got to do that quick because you don't want to mess that up. Or else you're going to take a lot of unnecessary damage. Now, let's say the wave starts like this and the Ranger hits you, right? It's going to be tempting to put on Protect from range. Don't do it. Don't do it. Keep your Magic Prayer up and run back here. Then let him hit you. Once he hits you, run over here and attack him. Now wait. If you've been here for a couple seconds and are getting attacked, then you can put on protect from range. Right? But it's very important to do that. And I look, you know, I'm not happy about it either. We took a lot of damage, right? It kind of sucks. But it's way more important to do that and be safe than have the major hit you and kill you instantly. Um, so once you know for sure you've ran back over here and you're not getting hit, then you can switch prayers. But until then, keep the magic prayer up. It doesn't matter. You're going to have to drink these brews eventually. So 
Some waves are going to be like that. You're going to have to drink some brews, and it's okay. So we killed the ranger. We know there's a level 22 bird and a 360. So like I told you guys earlier, the 360 should be able to hit me if I stand right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on Protect from Magic, and I'm going to stand here and see if he hits me. If he does, I'll lure him. He hits me, right? I hear it. I see it coming. Now I lure him back here. I'll click back here and run. The only situation where he wouldn't hit me right there is if he was trapped on Dragon Rock. And then I would just run over there and lure him back to this safe spot. Um, I'll show you guys an example of that. If that were to happen, I'll show you guys an example of that. Um, hopefully it happens in one of these other waves. So I can show you how to lure uh, the monsters when they're trapped. But I feel like most of the time they're trapped over here, and you're just using these squares to lure them out based on their level. So the only reason the 22 didn't come is because he was behind the 360. Uh, if he was in front of the 360, then he would have came when I stood here. See how he's coming right down this line? That's exactly what he would do if he wasn't trapped. So yeah, start of the wave, pray mage right away. And wait. See if you get hit. you got to wait like 12 seconds before you know you're safe. If you don't get hit in the first, like, 12 seconds of the wave, then you're chilling. Look, see, he's hitting me. It's easy to think, oh, I'm not getting hit in the first couple seconds. I'm safe. I can save prayer. And then this happens, and then you're dead. So keep the mage prayer up, guys. I cannot stress this enough. I learned the hard way. <laughs> you really got to keep that prayer up and uh, make sure, because it can take about 12 seconds for him to hit you if he spawns as far away as possible. So really just keep it up and make sure. And then you're basically just doing this strategy uh, until wave 46. So all the way through wave 45 you're doing this strategy. So keep my prayer up, kill the major. We already killed the bird. So there's probably like a 45 or something and then the ranger. So what we're going to do is we're going to kill this major. We know we're safe from him now. He's dead. I can turn off the prayer once he's dead because he might have a last hit, so don't mess that up. All right, so let's see if there's any 45s, right? If there were any 45s, they would come right now, so there's not. So if the ranger's back here, then he should attack me on this spot. So I'll pray range, and there he goes. Same old process, just repeated. And then I'm going to lure him over here so I can stay in the comfort of my safe spot and be ready for the next round. He's over here, and we'll go kill him and repeat the process. Now, so far, I've been, um, I've only been having to kill monsters that were safe spotted behind Italy. That's usually how it happens. Um, but right now, there's another monster in here, maybe a 45 or something, that I can't see. He's not coming. I'm standing here. So that means he's stuck behind Dragon Rock. He's back over here behind this rock. Um, we know the Major and Ranger are both dead on this round. So we know it's safe for me to walk over here and kill him and then restart the round. Now it's going to be tempting for you to run over here to kill this guy and start the next round. Um, okay, it's a bird, not a 45. Sorry about that. But basically what you do is you just run out like this direction and he's going to come out and come to you. And that's how you lure him from over there. Instead of killing him over, over there, run back over here and kill him over here so that way you're in the comfort of your safe spot prepared for the next round. You know, don't don't get yourself out of position to kill him and mess up your safe spot. Uh, just kill whatever monsters come to you. If they're, you know, the 45s or the birds or whatever, just kill them. Keep Mage Prayer up just to make sure. So this round was a good example, right? I haven't been hit for a while, so I'm waiting. I'll give it a couple more seconds. I don't think I'm getting hit by the Major or the Ranger. This is very rare for these rounds. It's very rare for you to not get hit by either one of them. So now we know that the Major and the Ranger are left. Probably a, a bird or something. And um, if we stand here, the Ranger can hit me. So I'm going to put on Protect from Range and see. Since I was not hit by the Ranger right here, then that means the Ranger is trapped back here. You might be tempted to go run over there and kill him, but we gotta can't forget about the Major. Right, the major could always um, be right here too. So we gotta put on protect from mage and test and see if he hits me. He probably will, and there he goes. So now once he hits me, 
Come back here and lure him. And that's all you're doing right here. Once he gets over here and he hits me, I heard the sound, so I know he's he's lured over, and now we can go kill him. It could be very tempting right there for you to think, okay, the ranger's over here, let me go kill him, and forget about the major. But whatever you do, don't do that. Be safe. Always take your time. Do the most safe option, so that way you don't, basically just don't get too comfortable, because next thing you know, you've messed up, you get the wrong prayer up. And you're either really low health and wasted a bunch of resources, or you're dead and you have to restart. All right, so we're still on wave 41. We killed the 45. We killed the major. So we know there's a ranger. And he's not attacking me when I come to his spot. He's not attacking me from over here. So he's safe spotted over here. So uh, it might be tempting to go kill him over here. But then you're out of place for the next round start. So what you're going to do is run over here, you know, let him hit you. And he's not moving, right, because he's a ranger. So he's not going to follow me over here because he would get stuck. If I just ran right here, he would just be stuck right here. Watch. And then it doesn't work, right? So what you have to do to lure him over here is you have to, like, run out, basically. Run to the center and then come over this way to the east. And now what he'll do is he'll follow to hit me again. So once he hits me again, I know he's moved out of the safe spot. And then I'll just drag him like I would normally, all the way back here. Stand next to the skeleton and drag him. You might think, oh my god, you know, I'm sprinting around the caves, I'm wasting all my prayer. No, it's it's not that serious. You've got plenty of restores, and you're going to be fine. Just lure him over here and kill him, so that way you're ready for the next wave. Because it's much more important to be in position than it is to finish the wave fast and messy. So we're getting ranged. Right? I'm just going to tank it. I'm not going to put on my protect from range because I don't know if the major is there too. So once he hits me, I'm running over and I'm waiting. Waiting. I'm not getting maged. I'm good. I can switch. Look, we took a bunch of damage. It sucks, but whatever. Better safe than sorry, right? So now I'll go see if the major hits me. Lure him. So Major's not hitting me, that means he's trapped back here. But yeah, the 22 and the 45 are coming, so we'll just kill them. Alright, so all the monsters are dead except for the Major. So same thing we just did with the Ranger. He's going to be trapped over here. We gotta lure him back to our safe spot for the start of next round. So all we're gonna do is run over here in the open, get toward the center, let him come out and chase us to hit us. And I'm gonna eat purple sweets for health and run energy. That's why these are so useful. And now that he's hitting us, we know he's moved out of the safe spot. He's somewhere on the s beneath Dragon Rock. Yep, towards the center. And now we can lure him towards our safe spot that we like using. So I'm just eating my sweets up for full run energy and for a little bit of health. And now that he's lured into this safe spot, we can kill him and we'll be in the spot perfect, ready for the next round. Wave 45 can be very intense. Um, so it's important that we go over that wave uh, ahead of time. So I'll, even though we're not there yet, I'm going to go ahead and talk about it. So wave 45 is important because you have two rangers along with the major. So basically what can happen is it's very easy for you to get maged and ranged at the same time and take a lot of damage. So all you're going to do is you're going to lure them by using this back here. Lure them, keep your mage prayer up, and then just kill the ranger as fast as possible. And that's basically what you're going to do for wave 45. So I already heard the ma mage hitting me at the start of the wave, so I know I can run back here. Now, if I come over here and the ranger's here too, then I'm going to kill the ranger first, right? But he's not here. It's just the 360. But if it was both of them, you pray mage and tank the ranger and kill the ranger as fast as possible. I got a little bit of lag there, sorry. Um, but yeah, basically just kill the major as fast as possible. And if you're getting ranged and maged at the same time, keep protect from magic up and get rid of the ranger so you stop taking damage. All 
All right, so we killed the major. The ranger's still here, so I can take off my prayer, and we know we're good to go. Uh, so put on protect from range. See if he hits me right here. He does, and then we just lure him. Same old process. Like I said, every set of waves has a pattern. And once you figure out that pattern, then you're just doing that pattern for those waves. Um, now, some waves, the spawns might have you messed up and hurt you. Um, but once you get to those points, then you learn from it and you uh, react accordingly. You never know what spawns you're going to get. So you prepare for the worst case scenario. Always start with the magic prayer up. Now, as you'll notice, I killed the major, I killed the ranger, right? And I'm like thinking the new wave's going to start, but it's not. So that means there's another monster safe spotted somewhere. He's probably stuck on Dragon Rock. Oh, there he is. It's the 45. He was stuck way over there. The reason he didn't come earlier is because he was behind the ranger. So that's why he didn't come when I stood right here. So sometimes that'll happen. But since it's just the 45, you know, not a big concern. All right. Start of new wave is coming. We know it. Wave 44, mage prayer up. Always prepared for the worst case scenario. Looks like I'm safe. Um, so I'm going to give it a couple more seconds. See, that could have been the major, but it, luckily it was the other 45. So now I know I'm not getting hit. It's been like 15 seconds. I can, I can change prayers or take off my prayer completely, and I'll be good. But it's important to wait because, yeah, he can hit you hard. So just be prepared for the worst case scenario. And look at that, you know, I haven't even, I barely drank one brew. So we're good. We're chilling. All right. So let's see if the ranger attacks. Same old process, right? 22s, 45s. This would be the ranger. And he does. So we lure him. And he'll come running over here. Once he, you hear the sound or see the attack, you know he's safe spotted. And then you come kill him quickly. Now that he's dead, we'll pray mage and stand here. See if the major attacks. He doesn't. Oh, just kidding. He does. So now we'll lure him. Yeah, sometimes you have to wait a second. It can, there can be a slight delay, so just give it a second and see. I got a little too impatient right there, and sometimes that can really hurt you. So it's good to be patient and just be careful. It's really all it is. Be smart and be careful. Take it slow, especially on your first couple times. All this is going to seem kind of overwhelming if it's your first time, but once you've done it a couple of times and you get the general idea, it's too easy. I promise you guys anyone can do this. All right, wave 45. This is the one where two rangers are here, right? So we're going to be taking more damage than usual. Don't turn on protect from range still because the major could be there. Wait and see. All right, so I'm going to run over here. I'm going to be ready to switch. Now I'm getting ranged by two of them. The major's not hitting me, so I know I can switch to protect from range, right? So I'm good, right? It's just I already killed one ranger. There's just one more ranger in the major. Um, should be just the ranger. I don't think the major is going to be there. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and brew up to be safe. Right? Always take the safest option, safest approach. And then we'll just lure him over here so we can kill him. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is you can drink three brews and for one restore. Um, hopefully that made sense. The way it works out is your stats will come back to normal if you drink three brews and one restore sip. You'll come back to whatever your stats were at and gain health. All right, so we've killed both rangers. We know it's just the major, so we'll go ahead and lure him and end wave 45. He's not, he's is attacking me here. So like I said, give it a second wait and uh, lure him over. Now that we've finished waves, you know, 37 through 45, there's going to be a new set of rules for wave 45 through 53. So I'm going to go over those in the next clip. All right, guys, so we just finished really the first hard, hard wave 45. Um, two Rangers and the Major, or we're finishing it up right now, I should say. And we're getting ready to start 
our next set of waves, 45 to 53. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to move back to Dragon Rock now. Because the rangers are gone, right? We killed two rangers. So we've got a slight period where there's not going to be rangers in waves 45 to 52. Wave 53, the ranger will come back. But for now, it's just the major and then the meliers. So what we're going to do is come back to our spot over here and keep your prey mage up. And then we're just going to do what we did earlier. We're going to safe spot this guy, just like we did when it was him and the ranger. But now it's the major, so all, the only difference is you're praying mage. And you're luring him. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kill this guy. So that way it's just the major. And next thing I'm going to do is run back here and lure him. Because I can't see him. I want to stay in my safe spot. I want to stay in this area. You just stand back here until he hits you and lure him over. And now we can finish and start the round in this spot. And you'll do this pattern for waves 46 through 52 until the ranger comes back. Uh, the only thing that could change, like I said earlier, is if something spawns here. And all you do is come stand over here again. And do exactly what we did earlier. That part is kind of tricky to learn. Uh, way over in the northeast part by the door. But once you get it down, it's really helpful. It can save you a lot of resources as compared to just running around taking damage. And it, it's it's just helpful to learn for the fight caves. So look, we're, we got the 180 spawned right here. He's about to hit us. Don't like that. So keep your mag magic prayer up and run over here and save spot him. It can be tempting to think, oh crap, he's going to hit me, I need to pray melee. But just let it happen while you safe spot and run over here. Tank a hit if you need to. Because I promise you that this guy is going to hit you a lot harder than any other monster in here. Alright, so we've killed the 180 -er. We're safe. It's just the 360 and the little bat. So just lure him over. Once he hits you, you know you're good. And then you can come back here and kill him for the next round. The bats, like I said, they won't get stuck, so you just gotta kill them. And then you can move on to safe spot, whatever's right here. This, These waves are actually pretty easy, relatively easy. Pretty simple, straightforward. Waves 46 through 52, you're just kind of standing here. And you're just killing whatever's here while praying mage. Waves 53 through 60 is when shit is at its hardest. I would say those are the hardest waves. And those are where the most mistakes happen, and those are where you really need to pay attention and do the right technique, or you're going to really be screwed. Uh, so all I'm doing right now is safe spotting this mage. Uh, it doesn't really matter because there's not rangers here, so I could actually stand here and be fine. And as you'll notice, the birds won't get safe spotted, but he will, and that's all that really matters. So if anything is hitting you right here, you'll kill it first. Now that we're safe, I just killed this guy. And I'm going to use my crossbow so that I don't get lured out and hit. Because if I use the blue pipe, it would pull me like in here somewhere. And then this guy would hit me. So, just use the crossbow. Be safe. It might be a little slower, but at least you're not getting meleeed for like 20 damage each hit while you're trying to kill the major. All right, so the major's dead. I can pull up my blowpipe pipe and just quickly DPS, kill the rest of the monsters, get ready for the next wave. Repeat the same process all the way through to wave 52, and then 53 is when the ranger comes back, and you're going to have to change things up a little bit. So since these waves are very similar, and they're not too hard or challenging, we've already gone over what to do. I'm going to talk about wave 53 a little bit so you guys can go ahead and have the heads up because that's when we're going to really need to focus again. Alright, so I'm luring the major over. When this happens, um, you should be able to use your blowpipe still. Yeah. So normally he would hit you if he was standing here, but he's like weirdly stuck because of the major. So 
I can actually use my blowpipe right here. Um, this is a spawn that'll happen every once in a while, you'll notice. It doesn't happen every time, but when it does, it's nice because then you can kill the major first and turn off your prayer and save some of it. As soon as he's dead, we're running back here because he could hit me right there. So I'm running back here to get safe spotted. Um, and now I just kill the rest of these monsters. So I'm going to take a second here to talk about wave 53 because I really want to go over it before we get there for you guys because it's important to know what's going to happen. So wave 53, the ranger comes back, right? Um, and you've got, you've got the meleeer, you've got the major, and the ranger. You've got all three of them, right? So stuff can really start going south once you get to these waves, so it's important to pay attention. So every wave uh, is from 53 to 60. You're going to do the same process. You're going to start here, pray mage, and you're going to keep it up and run back here and lure whoever's here. If the ranger or the 180 responds here, then stuff is different. Um, but if no one spawns here, then everyone's back here, you're just going to pray mage. And let's say the ranger comes up first, you're going to tank, tank and kill them quickly. And then you're good for the rest of the round. Uh, now let's say the major, or excuse me, the 180 or the ranger spawned here. If it's the ranger, I'm going to go kill it quickly. I'm going to run out and kill it quickly. If it's the 180 or he's going to melee the crap out of me, and we don't like that. So we're going to keep our mage prayer up and run south to that rock I told you about on the west side of the cave. So like south and to the west. And we're going to re-trap everything over there and get a better safe spot. Um, that's only what you'll do if the 180 spawns right here. And that's only on wave 53+. plus. But I just wanted to take a second to talk about that. So that way I don't have to try to explain it in the heat of the moment later on. Because really waves 53 through 60... It kind of just depends on your spawns and where everything spawns at and how you react differently. So hopefully I get a, a good variety of spawns so I can show you guys how to react to each situation appropriately for those waves. Um, I might not get every spawn. So I almost lagged out there. That was terrifying. That can definitely get you killed. So, try to get better internet than me, I guess. <laughs> Since I'm lagging so bad, I'm going to keep my mage prayer up early just in case. Alright, so yeah, this is one of the monster spawns. It's just the 45, so I'm just going to kill him really quickly. Try to minimize the damage he does on me. And keep my mage prayer up the whole time, because I don't want to get maged for half my health. So the major's hitting me. He's safe spotted. We can go kill him. So yeah, pretty simple through wave 52, just doing the same old, same old. All right, Major's dead, just the melee -er. save some prayer, kill him. Another thing I start doing around wave 50 is putting on my Mage Prayer early in case I lag, and also saving my Blowpipe special attack. All right, so this guy spawned over here, he ruined things, so we just run over here, safe spot him, and kill whatever monsters come to us. I'm going to kill the bird even though this guy is hitting me pretty hard, just because I don't want my prayer drained. Um, it doesn't really matter. You're going to kill them both pretty quickly. Um, but I just don't like having my prayer drained, so I usually focus the birds, even if they're not the first one. All right, so we've killed all the small monsters. Now it's just the 180 and the major. So I'll keep my Protect from Magic up this whole time, obviously. Kill this guy and lure the major for the start of wave 52. Uh, so like I said, stuff doesn't really change until wave 53, so we're kind of just doing the same old thing here. Nothing to stress about. 
just react to the situation you're given, right? Don't overthink it. Don't freak out about what could happen. Just wait and see what happens and then react, and you'll be good to go. As you saw, we had the melee respawn here. I just moved around the rock, and I took a little bit of damage, but not much. I mean, we're fine. It doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. I'll probably heal up most of that um, after drinking some brews later on, so it doesn't matter. All right, wave 52, major spawn here, um, so I can just safe spot him while the 180er gets stuck here. See, if I had my blowpipe, this guy would come hit me, but I'm using the crossbow, so we're good. We're chilling, and everything else will get stuck behind him. So I'll see you guys in the next clip to go over waves 53 through 60. <clears throat> or I guess 53 through 62. We'll just include the last two. The last two waves are easy before Jad, I promise you. Wave 60 is really the last hard wave. Uh, the ones after that aren't too bad at all. Um, so I'll see you guys in the next clip. All right, guys, it's wave 52 here, about to kill the major. Um... Pretty close to the start of the wave. We've got waves 53 through 60 coming up. The hardest waves of the cave. I would argue that they're harder than Jad. Um, once you get Jad down, it's it's just too easy. But these waves, stuff can change. There's a lot more variance than, than Jad fight. So that's why I think these waves are actually the hardest waves at the fight cave. Because it all just depends on your spawns and how lucky you get with the spawns. Um, it can make your life a lot easier or a lot harder, starting at wave 53, because the ranger comes and the major and the melee, so you really have to be aware of your surroundings and be ready to react quick. So instead of trying to tell you guys what to do every wave, there's not really a set thing you can do, I'm just going to react and show you guys how I'd react to each situation, um, and then you can kind of learn from what I did and apply it to whatever situation you get. Basically, just stay up here at Dragon Rock. This will be the framework for every wave, right? Stay over here with Protect from Magic up. And then lure all the monsters right here. And then react to whatever spawns here. And that's basically your framework um, for waves 53 through 62. Alright, so we're about to be at the end of the wave. Even though there's still a couple monsters, I'm going to put this up in case I lag or in case he spawns close. Just be safe. So we know the ranger is coming. He's somewhere in here. He didn't spawn right here, but he's somewhere in here. And it's going to be the Ranger, the Major, and the Melier. Now, I'm getting maged, but it's, I guarantee you, as soon as I step over here, I'm probably going to get ranged too. So, I'm going to be ready to kill the Ranger. So, what you're going to do to kill the Ranger and basically be most efficient is you're going to get out your crossbow. You're going to put on Steel Skin and Eagle Eye. And you're just going to tank kill the ranger as fast as possible. So run back here. Let's kill him. This guy can't hit me. He's trapped. The major's here. So I'm just tanking the ranger's hits with those prayers on and killing him as fast as possible. You're going to hit some zeros and take some damage. And it sucks. This is a really bad example because that took forever. Okay, we took a lot of damage, right? But that's what happens in these waves. That's why these waves are so hard. You have to tank the ranger and kill him as fast as possible now it's just the major and the melee and it's back to normal and it's it's nice and easy but that's what you have to do um for those situations now if the ranger spawned here or the melee we might be in a little bit of a different situation um and hopefully i get some of those spawns later so i can show you what i would do don't forget to drink your restore after you drink your brew sips one restore will Bring you back up to full for three brew sips. Just keep that in mind. If you're running low on brews, you can eat purple sweets, but I usually only use them for on energy because they only heal like one to three HP per sweet, and they're very expensive. So it's kind of a waste to use them for food. Kind of use those as a backup. But yeah, that's how you do waves 53 through 62. It's just like I showed you right here, and then you just react to whatever the spawn you get. So if the melee spawned here, I told you shit would hit the fan, and you could run right here if the melee respawned here, but since the ranger's here too now, it's probably better to just run south and go to the other safe spot on the west side of the caves. So hopefully I get the 180 spawn here so I can show you what I'm talking about, and hopefully I get a ranger spawn here too, 
so I could show you what I would do. Hopefully the spawns change up every time so I can show you how to react to each situation. But basically just use this as your framework. Stand here and um, kill whatever is damaging you and tank the ranger if you need to. Start of the wave, I'll kill the bird and wait and see what happens. Now, the ranger might hit me first, the major might hit me, who knows? Keep the magic prayer up no matter what. Tank the range, always tank the range. Alright, so the mage is hitting me, but I guarantee you the range is right behind him. The same process. Tank, and I'll just kill him. Now, one thing that's interesting about this situation is I actually probably could have just stood right here and safe spotted the major without taking damage from the ranger. And then I probably could have killed the major and then switched to my range prey after. But, um, I just tanked the ranger to get him out of the way. And usually what will happen is you'll kill him pretty quickly and you'll be fine on health. And you might take a little bit of damage, but usually he doesn't do that much damage and you're good. The first round I showed you guys on wave 53, I actually took forever to kill the ranger because I just had some unlucky hits and unlucky RNG. And so it was a bad example, but that's basically um, what you want to do is just tank the ranger. So wave 55, same thing. Now since the ranger spawned here, I can show you guys what I will do. I just run over and kill him as fast as possible. Now he's out and I run back here immediately. So that way all the monsters get safe spotted here again. So that's what you do if the ranger spawns here. You kill him immediately and then you run back here and lure all the monsters. And now what you want to do, if you want to be safe and frugal, you can crossbow this guy, so that way you can take off your prayer sooner and save some of it. So I'll just do that. It doesn't really matter. Realistically, you could keep your magic prayer up, magic prayer up, kill these guys, and then deal with the major at the end. But if you're like super into saving resources and stuff, and you're sketched out about how many restore pots you have, then you can do this to try to save restores and prayer. And then take off your magic prayer after you kill them. But realistically, you should be fine to just kill them in whatever order you want after the ranger is dead. So yeah, basically the number one priority is getting rid of the ranger. Alright, so round's pretty much over. Just gotta kill these last couple guys. Take off my prayer and chill. Go ahead and get my prayer back up for the next round. If you're 52 prayer, drink at 31 prayer to get you back to full. You kind of just learn where to drink your restores off at based off of your prayer. All right, so this is a unique situation. The melee respond here. I'm glad I got this so I can show you guys. I'm going to run south and tank the ranger. And as I'm tanking him, I'm moving so the melee doesn't hit me. And now what you're going to do is if you can't kill him, sometimes you'll kill him right there. But if you can't, you just run over here and drag him. And then once he gets over here, what you're going to do is kill him. With your, um, damn, I'm taking a lot of damage. Holy shit. Alright, let me brew up. No worries. I'm just gonna brew up. Sometimes that happens. And you just run back here. If you're taking too much damage, just brew up and run back here. It's not a big deal. And that's why, that's why this safe spot's so nice. I got pretty low there. It's kind of scary, but you're chilling. The biggest thing is just brew up when you need, and then run back here and lure. So right now, if I step forward, I'm going to get hit by the Major and the Ranger, right? But at least I'm not getting hit by the 180. So you're just making your situation better and reacting based off of what happens. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tank the Ranger with my Protect from Magic up, just like we talked about earlier. So, tank him. That way, when the Major hits me, I don't get hit for like a 60. I just get hit for whatever the Ranger hits. I kill him really quickly. If my RNG was better, I would be quickly. And now that he's dead, I just have the normal 180 or major, and we're chilling. I'm going to do a blowpipe spec to try to get some HP. And it failed. I hit a zero. So so what I'll do right here is um, probably eat a couple of sweets, because that wave was really challenging with the spawns. And um, I'm just going to eat some sweets to save brews. I'll just get back to like 80 or something like that. That's a little safer. Don't have to go all the way to full. Just something where you're a little more comfortable. 
and go ahead and lure the major back up for the start of the next wave. So that's basically the worst case scenario you can have in, in these waves, is if the 180 spawns here. I'm glad I got to show you guys what that looks like, because um, you don't want that to happen to you, but you, you, you want to know how to react to it if it does happen, because that's like the worst case scenario. And that's how you react to those waves. You just, if the 180 spawns here, you try to tank the ranger, and if you can't kill him fast enough and you're about to get meleeed, you run around that rock and sprint to the back and get everything trapped on the rock on the west side. And then keep your medic pair up and tank the ranger with your crossbow. And that's basically how you do it. Sometimes you get shitty spawns, and you just have to be prepared for that because you never know what you're going to get. All right, so it's the 360. So we've had all three spawn right here now. So what you're going to do is just range him, and now you're going to watch because if the ranger was right here, you'd want to go kill him really quickly and then go back to killing the, the major. But since the ranger didn't come first, he's going to be back behind them, and he actually can't hit me. Um, since he's trapped behind them, he's a little bit too far away to hit me. So I can just stand here and kill this guy. And then when he's dead, I can put on protect from range and kill him. And then I won't take any damage this whole round. So this is actually a really nice spawn. Um, you know, another thing that could have happened is the ranger could have came before the 180 -er, And then I would have to deal with him really quickly. But not a big deal, you know, tanking the ranger like usual. But since that didn't happen, I just pray mage and kill him. And now that the major's dead, I pray range and safe spot the ranger. That's pretty much all there is to it. It's just learning the the patterns and how to react to them. And look, I'm not going to take like any damage this round because I got good spawns. You never know what spawns you're going to get though, so be prepared for anything. All right, I'm going to try this blowpipe spec again. Hopefully I can actually All right, I gained like no HP off of that. Nice. Ugh. So you're basically doing that for all these waves, but wave 60. And wave 60 is the hardest wave in the fight caves. Um, wave 60, you have two rangers, the major and the melee. So you can take a lot of damage really quickly if you're not careful. So you pretty much have to be expecting to run on wave 60 and run around that rock. You might get a really lucky spawn and not have to move. But the reality is you're probably going to have to sprint across the cave back to the other safe spot for wave 60. For wave 58, I got the ranger right here, right? So I'm going to tank him really quickly. And even though I'm getting meleeed, the ranger does more damage. So my priority is to kill the ranger. Now I can focus on this guy and get him off of me. He's annoying, right? He's hitting fives constantly. He's taking away my health. But you want to kill the ranger first because he is the biggest threat. And you can worry about these other clowns. So I'm using way more resources than I would like to. But I think it's because I'm doing the tutorial and I'm showing you guys what to do. And also um, because I've got some pretty unlucky spawns. So spawns can play a big part in how your experience goes. And I'm, I'm actually glad that I got the unlucky spawns because I want to be able to show you guys how to react to the worst case scenarios. Because if you just get the best spawns every time, then it's going to be a lot easier. But then you won't know what to do when you get the bad spawn. So it's kind of a blessing to get the bad spawns and then you know how to prepare for them. Alright, so we pretty much finished this wave. Next is going to be 59 and then 60, the really hard one. So 60... It's very, very much easier to die on than the other waves if you get a bad spawn. So be ready to tank, be ready to brew, and be ready to run. Because wave 60 can get messy quick. But this is 59, so we're still chilling. I'm going to let my spec um, charge up. So that way I can use it on wave 60. Because um, the blowpipe spec has a chance to hit higher than normal. So it can be good to quickly kill the rangers with. Alright. I'm getting ranged. I'm going to safe spot him. And tank him. Not safe spot him, but tank him. Usually three hits, maybe four, will kill him. Sometimes two if you're really lucky. And you take a little bit of damage, but now you're good for the rest of the round. And you just keep doing that process. 
before wave 60 starts, you're going to want to really heal up all the way. Very important. All right. All right. So wave 60 is about to start after I kill this major. So I'm going to bring him all the way over here so I can start in my safe spot. And what you're going to do is you're going to want to get up to full for wave 60. I might even recommend going a little bit over full, um, especially for your first time. You might want to brew over and then restore because it can be very easy to take a lot of damage. So same format for like how you've been doing the past couple waves. Start over here with your magic prayer up. But be ready to kill. There's going to be two rangers. If he spawns here, kill him quickly. And then worry about the other one like you would any other wave. But if he doesn't, then you're gonna then you're gonna have to be prepared to long range him with your crossbow. So let's see what spawn we get. All right, one of them spawned here. I'm gonna tank and kill him quickly, so that way I only have one other ranger to worry about. All right, so now I'm getting ranged by both. I'm keeping my protect from magic up, so I don't take damage from the major. Very important. All right, ranger's hitting me. I'm keeping protect from magic up because this guy can hit me. He's actually not hitting me right now, so I could I could pray range for a second there, but I'm just doing the safest scenario because I don't want to die from the major. So I actually could have prayed range right there and been safe, but that was just because I got I got a lucky spawn, right? So keep the magic prayer up. It might be tempting to you know protect from range because you're getting ranged at by two of them. But I promise you, it's still better to keep their Protect from Magic up, so that way you don't take some huge damage hits. And luckily, Wave 60 wasn't that bad. Um, I might have had a worse spawn and had to run back to the West Rock. I could have had to brew up more if they would have hit me harder. But luckily, they didn't do too much damage on me, and I was able to kill them both without having to go to my brews until after I killed them. Um, but Wave 60 is a tricky one. You've got the two rangers, the major, and the melee to deal with, and um, yeah. So now we've got 61. It's going to be two meleeers and 360. So what you'll do is run away from them. Don't let them hit you, but keep your magic prayer up. And then all we're going to do is run down to this rock that we normally run to. You could trap them behind the 360 and kill them like this. But that's kind of hard to do, and one of them will probably find his way around. So just run over here to be safe. Come back to this West Rock. Trap these guys. And now kill them. You know, like we said earlier, keep your magic prayer up the whole time. So there's no ranger. So like I said, 60 is the hardiest. Har <laughs> hardiest. 60 is the hardest. After 60, um, you know, it's pretty easy until Jad. You just got the... The Meleers and the Major. So you just pray Mage the whole time. 62 will be two Majors. 62 is important because there's going to be two Majors, and one of the Majors, the level 360, they're either going to spawn up here, in the middle, on the side over there, back here in the bottom, or maybe even behind that rock. Wherever both of them spawn, it's very important to know because to go find them really quickly because the orange one, one of the 360s will be orange and whichever one is orange is actually the same exact spot where Jad will spawn. So a lot of people don't know that. But yeah, there's going to be this normal looking red one and then there's going to be a bright orange one. Um, so I'll go ahead and start the next clip for Wave 62 and Jad for you guys. All right, so this will be going over Wave 62 and Jad. All right, we've got the normal 360 here. Let's see where the other one is. All right, the other one's over here. See, he's bright orange. So what that means is that Jad is going to spawn up here in this monster spawn. So what I'll do now is I'll just kill both of these guys. Praying Mage. I'm going to put on Eagle Eye just to do this faster. But yeah. So yeah, this last clip will be going over wave 62, the last wave, and then Jad, the very last wave, the final fight. Um, so basically, uh, what I like to do is stand in the center for this wave. I don't stand back here by Dragon Rock. This is the last wave before Jad, so I stand in the center, see where I'm getting hit from, so I can figure out 
as close as possible where Jad's going to spawn at. Because you basically just want to find this guy as fast as possible, the orange one, before he moves too much. So that way you know where Jad's going to be at. So we know that Jad's going to be up here because he spawned up here. So this is how you prepare for Jad, right? I've got him like half health. Jad's coming as soon as I kill him. So this is how you prepare. Once you get the last 360, about half health, you're going to want to follow my exact steps. Drink a brew and brew over normal health. Drink a restore. And then once you're brewed and restored up, drink a ranging pot. And now your full stats over your max health. And you've got a range pot in, so you're 112 range or whatever. So Jad's coming soon, right? Jad's coming up. He favors range. So I start with a range prayer on, but he could do a magic attack. So I'll attack him, and then he maged me, so I'll change the mage prayer. Um, to learn his hits, it will take some practice. You can use the sounds, or you can watch him. But for me, I just watch him. And if his legs lift up like that, I know it's a magic prayer. But if they go faster and he stomps, you just click the range prayer. A good way to, um, to go about this is when the healers come in. You just want to get them off of him really quickly. So I'll kill the healer. But the whole time you're killing the healer, you just watch Jad and do the appropriate prayer. So I, I'm killing the healers, but I'm mostly watching Jad. Because I want to make sure that he doesn't switch attacks on me. So see how he just switched range right there? It could have been very easy for me to to die if I would have prayed mage. He could have one-hit me. So you're really just watching Jad the entire time and watching his attacks. That was actually a really easy Jad fight. Um, so I wish it could have been a little longer so I could have showed you guys more. But basically I'll just, um, I'll just, well first off I'll exchange this fire cape because I'm trying to gamble for the Jad pet. But um, yeah, I'm not lucky. <laughs> I know I'm not lucky. I've done that a bunch. Um, so that's why I'm doing the fire cape so many times right now. But yeah, basically for Jad, one thing I will say is um, watch him the entire time, right? It can be very easy to get distracted by the healers. But really what you want to do is just watch him and react. So if I'm praying range, getting ready for his range attack, I'm just hovering over the magic prayer, getting ready to click it if I need to. And then I see him lift up his legs but not stomp. I know it's a magic attack. I hear the sound. I'm familiar with it. I'll switch accordingly. As long as you're standing a couple squares away from him, he's not going to melee you. He can't melee you if you stand right next to him. So stand a couple squares away, and then you only have to worry about mage and range. The healers can be tricky. If they spawn behind him or they're in some inconvenient spot, use your crossbow to hit them really quickly. Switch the crossbow. And I would recommend getting your F keys in order so that way you can change between your inventory and your prayers and all that without having to click uh, on the actual icon. So I have F3 as my prayer book. Do whatever works for you. And, uh, you know, let's say Jad's ranging me. I'm protecting from range. And um, I see the healers come in, right? It can be tempting to click on the healers, but then you get distracted and forget about Jad, right? So what you're going to do to solve that is, you know, I'm, I'm blowpiping Jad. I'm using my blowpipe to do a lot of damage. I see the healers come in. I'm going to click on the healer really quickly if he's in close range and attack with my blowpipe. If he's behind Jad or I can't get to him, I'm watching Jad the whole time, right? Quickly F2 for inventory or whatever your F key is, and then right back to the prayer book. Just watching Jad the whole time. And then react accordingly to Jad's hits. It can be tempting to, to do things, you know, like, like um, slower. Because that's how you normally operate in RuneScape when you're not doing something stressful. But against Jad, it's very important to stay focused and react accordingly. So you're going to take normal actions like switching your weapon and attacking something. You're going to break it up into little pieces so that way you can focus on his attack style and pray the correct prayer. So, you know, normally you think, okay, I just need to switch weapons and attack the healer and then look back at my prayer book. But really, this is what you're going to do. You're going to be attacking Jad. You're going to be praying. He's too far, so you need to use crossbow. So you're watching Jad. Then you click the new crossbow with your prayer book right back out. Keep watching Jad. Then you scan for the healer to find out where he is. But focus on your prayer switches.
Then right after Jad hits, you know you have a second to do something. So let's say Jad switches to Mage. Boom, I switch to Mage, and now I'll attack the healer because he is um, far away. I need the crossbow. And then right after you attack him, right back to Prayer Book and watching Jad. So basically the focus is just the prayer switches. And as long as you do that and pray the right thing, then you'll kill Jad. If the healers are hitting you pretty hard, which they usually do, you pull out your blowpipe and just kill them while focusing on Jad for the prayer switches. And then once they're dead, you go back to Jad. But if they're not hitting you, then you can just kill Jad because they'll be distracted looking at you. Um, they can spawn again if you take too long to kill him, so it might be worth it to drink another range pot. If you get low health from the healers, then just take intermediate steps to drink brews while you're prayer switching from Jad. So you might get the 40 health and think, oh crap, I need to brew up. And then you're sitting here spam clicking your brews and you forget to prayer switch. So make sure you don't do that. All you do is if you get low health fighting the healers, keep watching Jad and then hit the F key for your inventory, drink a sip and then come back. Make sure you're on the right prayer for Jad, switch back to inventory, drink a sip, then come back. So all you're doing is you're taking normal actions you would do and just splitting them up into pieces so that way you're safe and praying the right thing. And if you do all of that, you'll beat Jad, you'll get your fire cape, and you'll be good to go. I hope my guide was helpful for you guys. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. And you can message me here. Uh, you can message me on faux forms. Uh, you can message me on YouTube. You can message me on uh, RuneScape, USMA. You can private message me and I'll answer any questions you have. Usually I have my private chat on, but since I was uh, doing this cave run tutorial, I turned it off, but I'll keep it on most of the time so you can message me if you have any questions. Um, you can also find me on Discord. So good luck to you guys, and I hope you go get your fire capes.